All right, it's time to start normalizing single moms dating without their kids being involved because we're not looking for a daddy for them. We're looking for a daddy for us. Moms like me, for example, who had their kids when they were really young, they're teenagers, they're grown. One of them's already moved out of the house, another one's getting ready to. It's really not a factor. We have our own places, we pay our own bills, and we take care of our kids just fine on our own. When we're dating, we're not looking for someone to come and help us. We can date people. We can have boyfriends. We can go over to their places. We can spend the night with them. We can go hang out with them and have fun and do all kinds of stuff. Just like we can be with our kids, do our mom thing, and take care of business without our boyfriends being around. We're looking for something kind of like a work-life balance, only a boyfriend, mom life balance, if you will. That's just me, but I won't. I have no idea how to balance a boyfriend and mom life, so I'm not coming back. Also, I don't want to be a dad to an adult woman, so no, I'm not A. Paying your bills is one of the many things you seem to do. Not like the rest of us people who don't brag about that like it's something they'll never forget. But while I'm still here to cheer you on in all your successes, I'm not the one on TikTok trying to make meeting single moms normal. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to see modern women are bitter because men are going their own way. Let's get started right away. All right, so I've gotten a lot of com comments similar to this one that I'm too picky. And it's usually from men that really probably don't meet my bare minimum. But I, listen, everyone has preferences, like everybody. I'm not for everybody. Some people don't like my facial piercings. They don't like all the tattoos I have. They don't like my weight. Some people even have a problem with Isaac. Like they don't want to date someone who still has all that responsibility with a child. Or, you know, I've had men come and say they don't agree with him playing with Disney dolls and things like that. And they aren't the men for me. I'm not the person for them. It's okay to be picky. I have a great life, let me tell you. So, you know, I'm happy to take myself on vacation. I take myself out to eat. I do all kinds of things for myself and I'm totally fine with it. I would like a decent boyfriend, but you know, if I don't find one, I'm big whoop. Cause I have a good life, I really do. And there's nothing that I can't do for myself. So, you know, I'm asking for like basic bare minimum I'm not being unrealistic. I want a dude that has a decent job. I would like someone who has decent teeth. I would like someone with good hygiene. I want someone honest and kind and compassionate and caring and loving. Like, it's real bare minimum. I'm, I don't know why people are saying this stuff. Weirdo, sorry, but it's weirdo comments. Um, and I deserve someone that, you know, matches with my lifestyle. I just am not a fan of um, trying to date someone I'm not attracted to. Like, I'm not gonna get naked with someone I'm not feeling it with. And so there has to be an attraction there. There has to be. I've lowered my standards plenty of times and ended up with men who have taken advantage of the situation. So I ain't doing that again. First, I can't see why a man would not want to date someone who doesn't take care of their health. The second person is a single mom. Number three is still single, even though she is 40 years old or something. Is this woman okay? And she's totally right here. People are free to choose what they want. Another thing is that men's tastes and interests are not taken into account at all, right? We don't need to make guys happy. She's very happy. Her life is wonderful. She has three kids by herself. She's strong and can handle herself. She doesn't need a guy. So, you know, any man who comes into her life has to bring a lot of good things with him. A lot of guys don't go on dates because there are women who think they are so damn entitled. Any smart person knows that women can get together with other people with just a click of their fingers. With the touch of a button, they can have fun in the bedroom, date, and get married. After that comes the question, can you get and keep the man you want? Yes? Or do you want to date guys who are way too good for you? Ladies, this is what every single woman does. They look for men who are too good for them. Which is fine. They can do that. 
This is the thing about these women that they never tell the truth about, right? This is the lie that guys are told. Oh, you know, just come up to us. I just want a nice guy. Okay, there are a couple things that I see on Hinge that guys do, and it makes me want to scream. And here they are. If you're a guy and you're watching this, don't do these things. Don't put the prompt, and definitely don't answer the prompt. The best way to win me over is, baby, if you want to be chased, I'll call the police on you. Like, I've literally seen guys answer this. The best way to win me over is, like, ask me out or plan a first date. You might believe it is very simple to get over things you don't like. You think it would be so much easier to just swipe left on a page you don't like instead of complaining about it. But now that I've seen so many movies like this one, I think I was wrong the whole time. I'm someone who's been eternally single, but there's this one thing that I now know that when I start dating again, it's going to be so much easier to find my person. And that is knowing myself, knowing what I want. I'm not saying six foot two, blonde hair, blue eyes, not that kind of stuff. I mean, that would be nice, obviously, you know, if they look like how you want them to look. Halfway by choice. I'm also 36, so I can't be having a guy that's on the fence about having kids, or and I don't really want somebody who's got young children either, because I don't envision that for my life over the next couple of years. Or breaker, that's pretty common sense. But also in terms of boundaries and values and what I stand for and what I don't. I went on a date a few about six, seven months ago with a guy who had too much to drink, in my opinion, to then drive home. I said to him, you probably, I can try drop you somewhere, like, you should probably get a taxi. Like, I was driving and sober. And I let it slide. He's like, that never happens. Yeah, I probably had that extra drink I shouldn't have had. The first date, and I went on two or three more of them. For me, that's like telling the universe as well as that person that that is okay with you. And it's not. It's more secure now in going in, being cutthroat, to be honest. It was like being an emotionally available f a narcissist, an emotionally available f a narcissist. There was many red flags in that day. <laughs> really being aware of those red flags and also what is a red flag to you and what your values are and what you want. I know myself. Right. So she even goes on to say that there were like 50 red flags on that date that she noticed and she still got with him anyway. Now, about the way I feel about some, I'm not excited to see that person again in a romantic way. And I know people are going to be here saying, oh, that's your anxious attachment. I have done that before where I've tried to say it's just my ego and it's just my commitment phobe issues. And it ended up being completely the wrong relationship for six months. I was dating this guy and it never felt right. And I just kept blaming myself and I just being scared. And it's like, just trusting yourself. If I'm not excited to see that person, if it's a, he's nice, he's fine, it was all right, just like, no. Like, no, no matter how good on paper it might look. No. The thing that I'm going back out with is keeping to my deal breakers, sticking to my values and what I accept and what I don't accept, which to me, not what's reasonable as female behaviour aligned with my values and what I think is important and how someone should behave or not behave. And the last one is listening to my body and how someone makes me. But as far as I know, a woman who is 36 years old and trying to have a child is old enough to be pregnant. You are going to have a hard time. Soon as possible, you need to meet this man and try to have children with him. And it will still be hard for you even then. I love guys so much. I don't understand how these women become dating experts and gurus when they hit 30. By the way, they can't even crack their own love lives. The man had fun with her in the bedroom, and she didn't mind. Remember, guys, that these women choose to do this and hook up with these men. Okay? But take a look at this. That's why she's setting stricter limits now, okay? She won't stand for any BS. If a man doesn't look good enough, the next time he goes on a date with this woman, he'll be basically being interviewed. So, why not check this out? To be honest, he turned out to be a narcissist and an emotionally unreliable F-boy. That's really cool. And she even says that there were 50 red flags on that date that she saw, but she still went out with him. But I believe that having limits and all of that is very good for you. What's wrong is that these women don't follow through. Of these women... This one is 36 years old and is trying to talk to you about rules and limits after hanging out with a bunch of bad boys. Let's tell the truth. So, 
You know, you say one thing but do something totally different. On paper, I agree with this woman. Guys, I really do. You know, stick to your morals and principles, all right? And look for people who share those values. I totally believe that it is possible for very successful men to have loving relationships. I've seen so many good conversations with girls lately who are saying that they have, they are in relationships or were in relationships with these very successful men, but what they wanted and what they needed were in this extreme conflict of each other. What a lot of these girls are saying is that their boyfriends, whether they're still dating them or not, what they wanted was someone who was like really passionate, really engaging, someone super intelligent, someone like really social who could um, like go to business events with them, but it's like very dynamic, it's like very dynamic woman, which I think is, a, I would consider myself that kind of a person. I have become that kind of a person because of my boyfriend. He's challenged me to be this way. It is possible for women to be like this. And I think women do want to be like this when they feel supported and loved and safe. What these girls are saying is that they want, the boyfriends want a girl who is all of these things, but not to be in comp like, they want someone who they could feel like they're winning against, but they don't want the woman to be more successful than them. You know what you were going to say was wrong, so you changed it to make it look like those men are to blame. When you stopped, you were about to say that they don't want to be competing with the women they're dating or being together with. From what I know about men, which isn't much, no man wants to be competing with their woman, whether they're successful or blue-colored. Click like to let other people know you like the show. You'll know when I add new shots if you click the bell. Thanks for everything you've done. Do it right now. Check out more videos of people hitting walls by coming back to this page.